here he is, folks. You know who he is, the undisputed UFC middleweight champion. This man has run roughshod through one of the deepest divisions in the UFC, and he is showing no signs of slowing down. He ain't slowing down now. He loves the ability to call himself the champ. A smile is on his face every time somebody goes, hey, champ, how you doing? The guy lives for it. He lives for the adulation. He lives for the applause. He lives for the ability to stay in the spotlight. He will fight to defend his title as if his life depended on it. Huge training camp for him. He feels like he has leveled up in a lot of disciplines of mixed martial arts. And man, if he presents an even better version, scary proposition for the challenger. Michael the Count Bisbee, the man many of these fight fans have come out to see. Tail of the tape for this middleweight championship fight. We go inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> The challenger, Dan Henderson. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, the reigning, defending UFC middleweight champion. Herb Dean is your referee, he's the third man in the octagon tonight. Well, ready to go for round one, and when you're fighting Dan Henderson, you better get the hands up. Tim Boach got knocked out in 28 seconds. That was a main event in New Orleans back in 2015. Hendo a little bit long in the tooth, sure, but still a very fast starter. You have to be weary of Hendo's power, particularly in the early going. Right hand, left hand. Yeah, yeah. And everything's landing with so much power. All right, so he's dealing with some swelling upstairs, and you got to think his opponent is going to continue to attack that region. But he has to. He's starting to see now the work is being done. He's starting to. Oh! Both guys appear to land there. Bing's hooked for the body there, his block shot looked pretty good, but ultimately the defense was there. He's able to slip the left. He gets to the single collar time. Look for him to now start to find uppercuts up the middle to try to do damage to his opponent. Well, I'm no fighter, but if I rock a guy to that extent, I feel like I'm closing the show. Absolutely. You gotta go close the show if you get a guy hurt that bad. You cannot back off and take your time. He's right for the picket. Go and pick the fruit. <laughs> Unable to connect with a right hook. Now a takedown attempt. It is not there. And not a tumble either. A swing and a miss by Henderson. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. Well, no surprise there as he lets his opponent stand back up. And now another being thrown on both sides. Nicely done to the body. Straight right hand now just misses. Bisping gets caught by that straight hand. Oh man, he lands another punch to the head. Just missed with the left there. This thing gets caught by that flush straight punch. Nice job by the offense there. Oh, solid kick right there. 20 
seconds left. Hardy closes the distance against the single collar tie. Clear shots for the end of round one. All right, DC, let's look at some of the highlights from the last round. Lot for the replay guys to choose from. Yeah, man, these guys stood on a quarter in the middle of the octagon. Take one to give one. Over and over, each guy landed, and they both landed very well over the course of that first round. You ready to fight? Ready. Round two here. All right, next round is now underway. Do you see any major takeaways after the previous five minutes? That both of these guys are very evenly matched. Matchmakers did a fantastic job when they put these two in the octagon. So even though it wasn't crazy, you got to see high-level mixed martial arts. There's his jab. So the head strike starting to pile up. Oh, how about that? He lands a huge kick. Henderson gets hit with that stiff jab there. He lands another punch to the head. Bisping gets tattooed by that stiff jab. All right, so now blood is a factor. You see that he has been looked like it did stun him a little bit. when it comes to the swelling. He can't miss it. And when you saw the swelling initially, you knew that he needed to change something. He still has not changed that. And while it's getting worse, it's still not at a point where we should panic. But a few more, and he's going to find himself in a dire situation. Under two minutes to go. Ground strike gets through. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment. Yep. All right, right into side control. Upper body strength figures to be put to good use here. Yes, absolutely. And you got to look for his opponent to turn back into him. He should chase guillotine. But the opponent turns to the opposite side. He can take his back, throw his hooks in, try to choke, or flatten the mountain. Just go for the finish. Look at that. Recognize he was about to lose position. Well, not good body language from his opponent here, DC. He's curled up. No, he's exhausted. He's been beaten. Man, that is loud. Another strike lands for the kickboxer. He really found that flow state pretty early in this fight, and he hasn't looked back. He found it really early. And when this guy gets into his groove, he is hell on wheels. And right now he is showing why he is such a high-level, high-regarded kickboxer. He is outclassing this guy. And the horn sounds on round two. All right, so there's the end of the round. Big story in this one now. The cut on the bridge of that nose from that strike. The cut man is in there. Should be able to shut this one and potentially prevent it from being a factor here moving forward. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene. You ready? You ready? Go. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. Yeah. This 
Bisping getting worked here from the top. Ground and pound strikes raining down. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. All right, well, if you like blood, perhaps this is the fight for you. That cut is really starting to open up wide now. It's starting to open up, but it doesn't seem to be affecting him too bad right now. It's still bloody, but it's not really limiting his, his ability to continue. Let's see if he can get through this and win this fight. Well, we'll see if he postures up and can get some of his ground strikes going here. This thing gets back up. Well, we may have the best cut men and women in the business, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to do much with that cut. Oh! Oh, he is stunned. Drunk driving out there. We'll see if he can recover. Now we're going. Oh, another one. Oh, he gets up here, but he is on wobbly legs. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Oh, that'll do it! Oh! Woo! Yeah, man, crowd loving it. Just a gorgeous shot there to end the fight. Really just the way he drew it up. He found the opening and capitalized on it to the utmost extent. Nicely done to finish the fight. Bruce Buffer now with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 31 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed USC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Patel. Well, his future is in the UFC Hall of Fame, but his present is still getting it done on the big show. Congratulations to Michael Bisping, Jason Perillo, and the rest of the team. This was a turn-back-the-clock type of performance out of Michael